فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى تلاي بإذن الله الكريم I want to cover a topic called الغلو في الدين Extremism in the religion And I think this topic is very important especially at this particular time that we're living where we see this taking place The way that I plan to go through this topic is as follows. The first point that I'm going to be speaking about is الغلو لغة وشرعة What does الغلو mean linguistically and what does it mean technically? The second inshallah ta'ala point will be حقيقة الغلو The true reality of what extremism means. Number three is Asbab al What causes extremism and how does it occur? Five, Madahir al The manifestation of extremism and how it occurs. And last but not least is Al Ilaj. Last but not least is what? العلاج how to cure extremism without further ado inshallah ta'ala let's start with the first point باذن الله الكريم which is الغلو لغه وشرعا what does غلو mean linguistically and what does it mean technically لغة as ibn faris رحمه الله ibn faris in his kitab معجم مقاييس اللغه he has a book where he speaks about it's a dictionary He defines words and he gives it its original meaning. And this book, Ibn Faris's Kitab, has one unique, distinct characteristic, which is if the word has so many usages, he tries to find a common, shared meaning that they all go back to. That's what he strives to do. So if there's five definitions on the, on the word and five different meanings that are put on it, Ibn Faris, rahimahullah, what he will do is he will try to find all those five is there one thing they have in common and then he will try to say that the meaning goes back to this one particular thing and that's the unique, distinct, beautiful thing about this kitab Mu'jam Maqais al when he came to the word Ghulu, he says Al-Ghayn Wal-Lamu Wal-Harf Al-Mu'tal which is the Wow He says is aslun sahih yadullu ala irtifa'in wa mujawazati qadrin. He says yadullu it indicates ala irtifa'in rising above wa mujawazati al-had and going beyond the appropriate measures. So he says yadullu it indicates what? Ala irtifa' to rise above and go beyond the appropriate limits ومجاوزتي ومجاوزتي قد ومجاوزتي قدر to go above the appropriate uh, measures that's what it means linguistically technically Ibn Hajar rahimahullah defined it Ibn Taymiyyah has a definition in his kitab اقتضاء سراط المستقيم لمخالفة أصحاب الجحيم and others they've defined it but the definition of Al-Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in his kitab uh, Fath al-Bari he brings this in the uh, kitab Al-I'tisam bil-kitab wa-sunnah he defines it and he says it means Al-Mubalaghatu fi al-shay'i wa-tashdeedu fihi bi-tajawuz al-haddi Ibn Hajar says it is exaggeration in something and to be stringent in that matter by going beyond 
the proper limit. So he said it is what? Exaggeration in something and being st stringent in that matter by going beyond the, uh, 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 the proper limit. So that is what it means. So that is what it means. Lughatan wa shara'a. Linguistically and what? And technically. So we've tackled and we've spoken about the first part of al ghulu which is Lughatan, what does ghulu mean? And Shara'an, what does ghulu mean in the Sharia? Now we move on to the second topic, I mean the second heading, which is Haqiqatul ghulu. What is the reality of ghulu? What is the reality of extremism? And I think, inshallah ta'ala, this one should be understood very very well. And the reason is because many people assume and they think extremism is only going beyond the appropriate measures and the appropriate and the proper limit. But what they don't understand is that ghulu can also be when the person is negligent. When the person is negligent of something it is also considered ghulu, and that's the reality of it. So ghulu means al-ifrat wa tafrit Al-ifrat and al-tafrit. What does that mean? Al-ifrat means to go above the appropriate measures. And al-tafrit means what? To become short and to be, uh, be below the appropriate limits. Al Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin Al Shanqiyatu, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, when he came to the ayah, Ya Ahl Al Kitabi, La Taghlu Fi Dinukum, Wa La Taqulu Ala Allah Illa Al Haq. When he came to that verse, he said something. He says, Wa Qala Ba'adu Al Ulamai. He said, Some of the scholars have said, Yadhulu Fi Al Ghulu. What enters into extremism is وَغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And other than the truth, so what enters into extremism and falsehood? الْمَنْهِيَ عَنْهُ is, in this ayah, is مَا قَالُوا مِنَ الْبُهْتَانِ عَلَى مَرْيَمِ أَيْضًا What the Jews have said about Maryam. Pay attention. The ayah, he says, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad ibn al-Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahu Allah, is saying something very powerful. He says that this verse, some of the scholars have said that what enters into la taghlu fi dinukum, don't go extreme in your religion, what enters it is what? What the Jews have also said about Maryam. The Christians, of course, they enter it. But also, also the Jews enter it. The reason is because the Christians have gone extreme. They took Isa ibn Maryam out of his level of being a human being. And what did they give him? They gave him divinity. And they said he's an ilah. فَعَبَدُوهُ They worshipped him, right? But what did the Jews do? They done taqseer. They went short in the rights of who? Isa ibn Maryam. And they slandered his mother. Placed on her a false accusation by saying she's a zaniya. That she committed zina. The ayah is talking to kill at tarafain both parties. Both parties are being said to. لا تغلو في دينكم. Don't go extreme in your religion. And then he goes on to say it more. He said واعتمده القرطبي عليه فيكون الغلو المنهي عنه شاملا للتفريط والإفراط. هذا بنص كلامه. He says and Qurtubi relied on that understanding. فيكون الغلو. So the غلو, the extremism, it encompasses المنهي عنه شاملا. It encompasses. للتفريط والإفراط as I said to be what? Ex exaggeration and negligent exaggeration and to be negligent both of those are the reality of extremism and that's why it's important my beloved brothers and sisters it's very important that we understand this because a lot of people think that extremism is only when a person is exaggerate, exaggeration on a matter. But what they don't understand is 
that the one who's negligent and is lenient and also becoming low by, uh, 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 to the appropriate limits is also a person who's fallen into the is also a person who's fallen into a ghulu extreme and that's how the sharia observes it and Allah wa ta'ala told us to not be those who are negligent and those who exaggerate but to be in the middle Allah says to us وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ And like that we have made you a nation which is in the middle. In the middle of what? Al-Ifrat and Al-Tafrit. Al-Ifrat and also what? Al-Tafrit. We don't go extreme on this side by going to exaggeration. And we also don't go to the extreme of becoming negligent of our religion. And Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabri, when he commented on, the, on that ayah, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا He said, أهل توسط واعتدال فيه فوصفهم الله بذلك إذ كان أحب الأمور إلى الله أوسطها الله says وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا الله made you a nation that is in the middle it means أهل توسط a people of moderation واعتدال a people who are in the who are balanced فوصفهم الله بذلك أن الله described this أمة to be like that to be Ahlu Tawassut and Ahlu I'tidal that the moderation and being balanced is Allah what he described them to be. Why? إِذْ كَانَ أَحَبَّ الْأُمُورِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Because the matters that are most beloved to Allah are what? أَوْسَطُهَا That which is in the middle. Allah loves that which is done with a balance and that which is done with moderation. Balance in what? Not becoming negligent and not also going into Exaggeration, because both of them are what? Both of them are extremism. And that's what Allah Taala freed the messenger from. Allah said about him, Meaning, Nabi Allah Muhammad did not come with what? Al-Ifrat, no tafrid. means here what? He didn't go overboard. And he didn't come short. Alayhi salatu was salam. He didn't fall into what? Al-Ifrat and Al-Tafrit. Also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He commanded us as believers, the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah said to us, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَطْغَوْا إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ In this ayah Allah says to us, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ Allah says, be steadfast, be upright. Istiqama means no ifrat and no tafrid, no exaggeration and no, no, no negligence. Fastaqim, to be upright, to be steadfast. Kama umirta, the way you were commanded, O Muhammad and your followers. Wala tatraw, don't become extreme. Don't become exaggerate. Don't exaggerate. Inna bima ta'amaluna basir. Also Allah says, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا That means taqseer. Don't come with short and negligence. فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارَ And the fire touches you. And you get punished. So this ayah brought the two paths that we need to stay away from, which is al-ifrat and al-tafrit. And it also told us the path that we need to come with, which is what? Istiqama. And the true reality of istiqama means that it is between ifrat and at-tafrit. And it is because of this that you find some Muslims, when they condemn extremism, what they're truly condemning is what? They actually are condemning, some Muslims, they are condemning what is what? Is what? Min sha'ir al-Islam, from the symbols of Islam. What is Islam? So we have to understand that we condemn extremism. And the kuffar, they condemn extremism. But what are they condemning and what are we condemning? They condemn a person who has a beard, a person whose garment is short, a person who dresses with the symbols of Islam, a person who loves his religion internally and externally. For them, that is extreme, sarahatan. So when you're condemning this, you have to understand that your defining of the word and their defining of the word it has two different meanings. 
So you have to understand the reality of al ghulu in your religion. Because whilst you're trying to run away from becoming a person who has extremism in exaggerating, don't fall into the other extreme of becoming negligent. Don't fall into the extremism of becoming ne- negligent. From those verses that we've taken, oh, like the Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ And the statement of Allah, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى We can conclude the following. We can conclude that the people who Allah is, being, is speaking to, and the, um, the people generally, when it comes to accepting, when, they, when it comes to the people accepting the textual evidences, they are of three levels. The first ones are al mutamassiku bil haq al mustaqimu ala tariqi. They are those who adhere to the truth and remain steadfast along its path. The second, the second group is al mufarrithu al zaigu al mudayyu li hududillahi. The second one is very negligent. And he is, is also laxidaisical. Not coming to the limit set by Allah subhanahu. وَتَعَالَى And the third are الْغَالِي الَّذِي تَجَاوَزَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ And the third one is the extreme in exaggeration above and beyond the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam also taught his companions not to fall into the الإفراط عن التفريط ولذلك حديث أبو علي رضي الله أبو علي الرياحي التابعي رحمه الله هي سد قال ابن عباس ابن عباس سد أما قال لي رسول الله ابن عباس سد that the prophet said to him غداة العقبة on the morning of العقبة the prophet said to him وهو على راحلتي هات القطلي and he was he was mount on his he was on his mount alayhi salatu wasalam the messenger of allah and he said to him pick some pebbles for me the prophet said to who? ibn abbas he said go and pick up some pebbles for me so ibn abbas he said falaqattu lahu hasayatin hunna hasal khathfi falamma wada'tu hunna fi yadihi qala bi amthali haula so he said i went and i picked some pebbles for him that there were the size of date, date and uh, the dates that people eat for, you know, the date stones. The seeds that are inside their dates, they were that size. And so he said, I gave, I placed it in his hand, alayhi salatu wasalam, and I said to him, here. The Prophet then said to him, bi amthali ha'ulai, like these, na'am, like these. And then he said, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَ فِي الدِّينِ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَ فِي الدِّينِ the Prophet said to him, like these, and beware of going to extremes in your religious matters. For those who came before you were destroyed because of going to extremes in matters of their religion. So this hadith, what does it show us? That the Messenger والسلام, didn't want him to bring a rock and also nothing, nothing insignificant in this size. Don't go exaggeration and don't also become negligent. Now this brings me, this hadith brings me to a point that's, that I need to speak about which is to understand haqiqatu al ghulu Are you with me? To understand the reality of al ghulu we need to understand how many types that it occurs in. So we're still in the topic, I'm in the heading, haqiqatu al ghulu But we have to understand that the ghulu is of two types. And it's not only one type. And it is not one particular form. And it differs from the actions of the creation. And it is for who ala is of two types. The first one is ghulu i'tiqadi, which is related to beliefs. And the first one is extremism related to beliefs. And the second one is ghulu amali. It is ghulu related to deeds and actions. And it's important that understanding these forms will actually help in knowing the reality of extremism and it will give you a correct conception regarding it and a correct perception of it. 
The first one which I said was Al-Ghulu Al-I'tiqadi is what's known is known as Al-Ghulu Al-Kulli Al-I'tiqadi. It's the first form is comprehensive general belief related extremism. And it is the ones that enter into the chapters of Al-Aqidah. When you open a book of Aqidah that you look you're studying extremism happens. And we summarize them in five points. The extremism that falls into these five. The first one is Al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's names and attributes. There's extremes in exaggeration and there's extreme in what? Negligent. And Ahl Sunnah are in the middle of it. Who are the ones who go extreme in exaggeration? Like the Mushabbiha. Who not only they affirm Allah's characteristics, but they go so extreme that they say Allah's characteristics is like the characteristics of his what? They're like the characteristics of his slaves. And then you have the other party who are known as the Mu'attila, who have dismantled Allah Ta'ala's characteristics, negated Allah's characteristics. And what have they done? They've come with a creator with no characteristics. And what falls under that is the Jahmiyyah, the Khawarij, and the Mu'tazila. They all fall under that. And the Asha'ira, who are Mu'attila, in the majority of the characteristics of Allah, except seven, as they claim. The second one is the issue of Al-Wa'ad wal waid the promises and the warnings that Allah Ta'ala sets. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala promises and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala also warns. Are you with me? There's extreme on both sides. There are those who are extreme and exagger in exaggeration and there are, the, there are those who are extreme in negligence. The third one is as sahaba the companions. There's those who have gone to extreme in exaggeration and there are those who have come extreme in negligence like those who have done takfir of the sahabas all of them like the khawarij and the rafidah who came and what did they do they took ali ibn abi talib like the nusayriya and the ismailiya what did they do they 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 worship ali ibn abi talib and they've given him divinity and they what and they worship him sahabas the fourth one is al-asma'i wal ahkam Names and rulings like the issue of Al-Kufr and Al-Iman and uh, Islam, these terms are also extremism in exaggeration and extremism in what? In negligence regarding it. So you find those people who label everybody a kafir on minor issues. Or not only on minor issues but on sins. On sins, major sins, methylan. And there are those who a person falls into kufr, bawah, kleka, kufr, ma'adalika, he's still what? Yunadr, he was saying, Aki, look at his heart, look at he loves the religion and whatnot. That's another extreme. The fifth one is al qada wal qadr. There's extreme in affirmation, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, extreme in exaggeration and extreme in negligence. The extreme in exaggeration is those who said the slave has no choice. Allah Taala predestined everything for him and the slave is like a leaf on a windy day. And there are those uh, the, which are known as the the Qadariyatul Mujbira. And then came the other ones who were extreme in what? In negligent. What did they say? That um, the slave does everything himself and Allah only finds out and comes to know about it once it's, when it's, once it's already happened. And they are known as the what? Qadariyatul Nufat. Two extremes. So this one, if those five that I mentioned, which is al asma wa sifat Al-Wa'ad wa Al-Wa'id, Al-Sahaba, al asma wa Al-Ahkam, and also Al-Qadai wa Al-Qadar, those five, it is the ghulu al kulliyu al i'tiqadi. It's comprehensive, it is general, and it is belief related extremism. 
This one takes the person out of da'ira to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The person leaves the fold of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and he becomes part of the deviated group whose characteristics and attributes which he comes with. The second type which is Al-Ghulu al al amali It is extremism with respect to particular deed. It is extremism with respect to particular deeds. This one, which is Al-Ghulu al al amali is the one that a person will do in terms of actions. It's not a belief related matter but it's actions. It's like the three men who visited the Prophet's wife's house. The hadith of Anas ibn Malik in Sahihain. Ja'a thalathatu rahtin, three individuals, they came ila bayti azwajin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wife's house. Yas'aluna an ibadatin nabi. They questioned and asked the wives of the Prophet, how was the Prophet's ibadah like? فَلَمَّا أُخْبِرُوا when they were informed كَأَنَّهُمْ تَقَالُوهَا So they, when they were informed and they were told about the Prophet's worship, they considered the worship of the Prophet ﷺ to be insignificant. And they responded by saying, وَأَيْنَ نَحْنُ مِنَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ قَدْ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ They responded and they said, Where are we from the Prophet? His past and his future sins have been forgiven for him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So they're, they're trying to say that the reason why the Prophet is relaxed in his ibadah and he's chilling uh, is because he's forgiven for his past sins and his upcoming sins. Whereas we, we don't have that, we don't have that, that rukhsa. So based on that, we're going to have to become very serious. So the first one, one of them, he said, أَمَّا أَنَا as for me, فَإِنِّي أُصَلِّي اللَّيْلَ أَبَدًا All night I'm going to pray. وقال, وقال آخر, another one said, أَنَا أَصُومُ الدَّهْرَ وَلَا أُفْتِرْ The whole year I'm fasting and I'm not going to break my fast. And the other one he said, أَنَا أَعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ I'm going, I'm going to stay away from the women. فَلَا أَتَزَوَّدُ أَبَدًا I'm never going to get married. فَجَاءَ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أما فجاء رسول الله, the messenger came. And he was informed of what these three individuals said. And then the Prophet said to them, أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْتُمُ الَّذِينَ قُلْتُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا Are you the ones who have said this, 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 this? And then the Prophet said to them, أَمَا وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأَخْشَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَتْقَاكُمْ له. I am the one who fears Allah the most, and I am the one who is most, most conscious of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَكِنِّي أَصُومُ But I fast. وَأُفْطِرُ And I break my fast. وَأُصَلِّي I pray. وَأَرْقُدُ And then I sleep, I relax. وَأَتَزَوَّجُ النِّسَاءَ And I marry women. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Anyone who turns away from my sunnah is not from me. So these men, what they did was, the ghulu they came with was what? Ghulu amali. They, went, they exaggerated in terms of their actions. Now this one doesn't take you out of the fold of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. If a person does, is extreme on one particular act, it doesn't take him out of the fold of Ahl Sunnah well, Jama'ah, however, however, إِذَا تَعَدَّدَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْغُلُوُ الْجُزْئِيِّ الْعَمَلِي However, if the specific deeds become many, if those specific deeds that you're going on become extreme on, whether that extremism is what? Exaggeration. Or whether that extreme is negligent. If that specific deeds or those deeds become many, فَإِنَّمَا تُصْبِحُ غُلُوًا كُلِّيًا It then becomes a comprehensive type of extremism. It falls under, under the what? الْغُلُو الْكُلِّيُّ الْإِعْتِقَادِي The reason is why. لِأَنَّ الضَّرَرَ الْمُتَرَتِّبْ عَلَيْهَا نَظِيرُ الضَّرَرِ الْمُتَرَتِّبِ عَلَى الْغُلُوِ الْكُلِّيُّ الْإِعْتِقَادِي This is because the harm resulting from these various deeds is similar to the harm that results from a comprehensive belief-related extremism. It's the same harm. The outcome and the result are the same. Now we've finished understanding the reality of al ghulu and what it means. We now, inshallah ta'ala, are going to swiftly move on to 
Asbabul Gulu. What are the things that cause extremism?